preaching today. It is an understatement to say that we live in very difficult times. We live in very difficult times after 2020, which makes everything more interesting and more challenging, really. We live in a context of global crisis, unexpected. We live in a world that has a growing distrust of tradition, of institutions, of authority. We live in a time of polarization, as we have never witnessed before. Accelerated in a surprising way, really, in the past 18 months. It's so hard to have a conversation with someone you disagree with. Polarization in the world, political and such, polarization within the church. People are clearly divided in sides. You're, oh, you're one of those, so I cannot even talk to you. On top of this, the scandals uh, within the church create further confusion among the people and among the clergy. An aggressive secularism with its underlying philosophy of relativism in which everything depends on how you see it, what you like, what you think it's good, permeates all institutions and certainly whether we realize it or not, even ourselves. We witness, and I, you, we're all involved in the church, we witness the failure of many of our normal, so to speak, ecclesial methods and our systems. Things that worked in some way years ago just don't work today. The status quo in the church is collapsing. It is what Fulton Sheen described as the death of Christendom, not the death of Christianity, not the death of the church, but Christendom, this influence that the faith and the church had in economy and politics. I mean, think about that place where we are. To come to this place is just so impressive, so beautiful, so majestic. Do you think we could build something like this today? Not that we necessarily should try to. I'm just saying all the things that we see are the fruit of a certain expression of Christendom. We're so far from that right now. I mean, how many dioceses do we have to close churches and leave things? I mean, we're losing territory. But we're coming to a new stage in the church, and that is a challenge. How are we going to respond to that? when we realize that, as statistics say, only 10% of millennials that were raised in the Catholic faith still practice their faith, then the likely bleakness of the next decades fills us with understandable uncertainty. So what can we do about this? Well, the truth is that there is no program highlighting that word, that can fix the problem. These are times to go to the roots, the roots of who we are, the roots of our faith, and to cling to Jesus Christ more than ever, the way, the truth, and the life, who said to his weary followers, come to me and I will give you rest. And here we come to a very important point. Most Catholics just don't know how to, quote unquote, do this, to go to him. And let me explain what I mean. The majority of baptized Catholics do not necessarily, as we know, experience their faith as a relational reality. I don't mean just subjectively or superficially. I mean as deep, real personal communion with a divine person, as friendship. Most Catholics have learned things about God. We know how catechesis, RE, typically works at a parish. You know, we teach things about God, you know, learn all the things, all the commandments, and when you do that, then you can receive this. And what happens after kids or adults receive their sacraments, many times that is like a diploma, goodbye. One of the most, one of the crazy things that mysteries even that puzzles me every year is that 
within RCIA, people that adults that go attend classes, events for a year, and then are receiving to the church, around 50% stop practicing the faith within the first year. How is that possible? What, what is happening in the world, but also what are we not doing? And I'm including myself, that I see this in my own parish. 